this is Kathy. It's always a pleasure for us to connect, uh, even though it's not in person, it's a live event. Uh, I certainly prefer live events with you guys. So again, um, welcome. Let me get started here in the PowerPoint presentation. And what I'll do is I'll go through a list on this screen of some of the highlights of what's new in version 23. When I bounce over into DP2, the first thing that I'm gonna show you in DP2 is the what's new document. So this 45 minute brief overview session, by no means everyone, will be the be all end all to what you need to know and understand about version 23 and everything that we have in there for you. Thanks to many of you and your great ideas and suggestions and feature requests. So please take this session for exactly you know what it is. It's just designed to whet your appetite and give you an overview of features, but we certainly hope that you are all very confident in your many ways of reaching out to us primarily via the, the support desk. Uh, please let us know what your questions are. Please let us know if and when you're ready for one-on-one -on -one training for some of these features or all features. We love getting together with you guys in these group sessions and we also appreciate the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one as well. Those are good opportunities for us to just kind of say, hey, what's going on? What's your workflow like? Where can we improve things and tighten things up and speed things up? And sometimes we don't even know the answer to that until we have an opportunity to get together. So I do encourage you guys to um, use us and rely on us and call on us as needed. So one cool new feature, thanks to a couple of you I can think of specifically, is we added uh, crop guidelines for you as you're cropping your images and viewing your images. You can add up to three crop guides for, you know, four by six, five by seven, eight by 10, and get a visual of those lines right on your image. So that's a cool thing. A couple of versions ago, or at least one version ago, my line gets very blurred from version to version but we did add the ability to change the color of our crops in DP2. So it's in the same location. I'll remind you of that here under the edit menu. There's a crop head alignment settings. And when I bounce over to DP2, I'll, I'll actually go there. Um, I always think that part of um, the challenge of you know, all the new features that we put into DP2 you know, once or usually twice a year, Part of the challenge is just knowing where to go in the system to get to it, using the help file, which some of us do a better job than others. I'll admit I'm sometimes guilty of like tripping over things one, two, sometimes three times before I say, oh, well, why don't I look in the help file and um, stop tripping over my mistakes and read all about how to do it, thanks to someone like Peter V, who is awesome, just incredibly awesome at telling us how to do stuff the right way the first time and save us all a whole bunch of time. So everything that I'm showing you on this what's new list, when I bounce over to DP2, I'm also going to bring up the what's new document in the help file. And these items and others will be listed here. I'm not going to go through everything that's new, but this is sort of a, uh, I'm going to call it a highlight list. These are features that are sort of good to demonstrate, but it doesn't mean that these are a higher priority or more important than one of the other new features in version 23 that may be of more importance to you. I just decided to highlight a few that I think are good ones to demonstrate, but by no means is this the full extensive list of what's new. Uh, thanks to a couple of other uh, others of you, we can now add that second bullet crop categories to better organize your crops. You guys said to us, hey, you know, from season to season, from my sports work to my school work, I've got all these crops in a singular list. Can you give me a way to jump to the right crop the first time a little bit faster and easier? And you guys know when you submit those feature requests to us, what we do back here is, you know, evaluate them. We certainly see if we have 
more than one request for the for the same feature. Those tend to bubble up to the top of our developers priority list and um, you know, we give thanks to you guys for continuing after all these years to tell us how to streamline things in your workflow and make things easier for you. So that's another good item there. Another one that's here in version 23 is the ability to move or copy images with its respective subject data record. Um, on the previous bullet, I forgot to mention here that I'm pointing out how you set up those crop categories from your crop tab and manage images. You can also assign crops to those crop categories in your group balance and head alignment um, crop setup. I know there's a lot of words there, so I will visually remind you of how to get to these features when I bounce over to DP2, this third one move or copy images with subject data. We have at least one way of getting to it off of your image, inside of your order, right click. There is a move or copy images now in your right click menu as of version 23. Um, I put up a couple here, I'll back up one. We have an event action uh, sparked by a couple of you. Uh, do you remember for those of you doing events, for those of you that, that are not doing events, um, just kind of take this as in for good to know information and ask us more about it. I, I've said it, I said it in the beginning, but I'll say it again because I know people have continued to come in, everyone. By no means is this session your be all end all to what's new in version 23 and how to work this stuff in DP2, you know, version 23, how to implement it. Please, as you know, and you're comfortable with, call on us and say, hey, I think I heard something cool. I don't even know what it is that she said, but she said something about events, so can you tell me more about it? So take this as a little bit of a teaser and follow up with us um, individually anytime via the support desk as needed. But we did add, add this cool event action. Events in DP2 have been around for several versions now. They're designed to automate processes in your workflow, such as sending, email image attachments, zipping up emails and sending a zip attachment. Uh, they're designed to send text messages to employees in the lab to let them know if there's a printer error or a command importer error um, or a worker error. And as I say these things, I, I can like go through my mind and think of those of you that said, hey, great idea, but what if my worker gets an error? Can you give me a script for that too? So. You guys are so awesome in you know telling us how to add to the mix once we introduce something. So we did add the ability in version 23 to send a message to another workstation. For example, in the event of an error, maybe a printer error, maybe a render error, um, maybe a worker error, maybe a command importer error. As with all other events in the system, you guys decide what triggers the particular action. The action is nothing more than a, than a script that says, you know, send this email, send this text, send this error message to another workstation, um, update my order status to some status based on something. It's always been a fun topic to describe to you guys because I usually say an event is all about making something happen <laughs> based on something else happening. So you decide what the trigger is, you decide what the something else that happens based on, on that trigger. So they're sort of wide open events in DP2, and I think we'll do another um, uh, micro learning session, another webinar on events too. You know, this is sort of our bigger global one around version 23, but couple weeks ago, Pat did some great sessions on, um, you know, some of the DP2 basics, and we'll continue to connect with you guys in more specific, or very specific, I should say, um, session topics. So this is kind of a, a very broad one. So use this as that teaser that I mentioned. We have added enhancements to our dual monitor support 
we saw dual monitor support in version 22, I believe. My lines get very blurred um, once a function comes around as to how long that's been around, but it was a relatively recent addition for us, but we did add some enhancements as far as the windows and dialogues that you're able to drag over to your second extended monitor. We do a better job of remembering locations of certain windows when DP2 is closed. For those of you that have checked that out for us and helped us with those dual monitor enhancements, thanks very much. For those of you that still need to check it out, any of these when you get version 23, please please check it out and let us know um, what else we can do to improve it. Uh, a couple of new macros. This is sort of a sister macro, this first one to a macro that hit the scenes last version in DP2, where it's a subject info macro. Um, the original one said for, your, you know, you guys know how macros are formatted for this variable image node 10,000, you know, display the contents of some text field. If it's not null, if that one's null, show me this other one. So that that one already exists in DP2. So this one is sort of a sister to that one that basically says, if field number one is null, then show me fields number two and fields number three with a, uh, you know, some sort of separator, a comma delimiter. So those are in the lookup category. Well, this one's in the lookup category, but I'm mentioning that sister one because this one was sort of sparked from that um, other subject macro that hit the scenes in the previous, uh, previous version of DP2. There's this um, order summary macro script. It's in your scripts folder. It's in your macros folder. It's been there a while, but um, Tom Aplin recently did enhance it for one of you guys. So this is was sort of our opportunity to say, hey, do you guys know about this? It's been enhanced. You'll have to take the contents of it and you know paste it into your macros file or better yet, my macros. Um, there's a call for it. I have an example for it. Peter V put it in the awesome help file that expands on these little teasers that I have for you. So um, we'll fully support everything that you see here, uh, both in the rest of this session and without a doubt in the help file that you'll get when you upgrade to version 23. Um, the next one here is product management. Aging products was introduced in version 22. That's where you can um, you know, that little green arrow inside of your products table. It's got lots of cool searches and finds and filtering stuff, one of which is aging. You can pull up the calendar and say, you know, show me all my products that I haven't used in 10 years, right? We have talked for years in DP2 about, um, hey, I've got all of these products. I don't know which ones I use. I don't know which ones I haven't used. So, we were thrilled, and I know you guys were too, that we introduced aid, the whole aging concept so that you could see and filter by those, you know, that aging criteria. You could, of course, delete them if you want to be completely out of sight, out of mind, um, you know, knowing that you probably have an archive of those layout files somewhere. But we've given you the ability in this version to just hide those products so that they're not visible in your DP2 products table. Um, and you can then unhide those products. You can filter by hidden products. Basically what we did guys, pretty simple, is there's a checkbox, there's a new column inside of your product data table that allows you to hide those products. And we've given you a right click, or I mean, a, um, a, yeah, right click method for, for hiding products. Another cool one uh, for those of you that might have a scenario for it and check it out. I'll illustrate this one. I think it's a pretty easy concept to convey for your order feeders coming into DP2. Your customers can drag, for example, say on an 8-up product, maybe it's a 12-up product, maybe it's a 24-up product. They can drag a whole bunch of images onto a single product that can come into DP2 guys as a single order item 
with X number of images on it. And then we can use this um, multi-node generating um, uh, macro that we have in there. Now I'll show it to you that allows us to create individual products, individual jobs rather, from that one that one up order item with a bunch of images. So you don't have to have uh, separate order items. Your customers don't have to get bogged down by you know using a product that just accepts a single image node. It was sparked by a capture life request um, where um, where the lab wanted to you know use a I can't remember what feeder they were using, what order feeder but they basically wanted to take ingest into DP2 one order item with 10, 12 images on it, and then have DP2 automatically create individual jobs, maybe eight by tens, but not even build order items, just stick them into a job queue, render those and, and off they go. So it was a great idea. It's great functionality. It doesn't have to be implemented with a capture life workflow, but that's, really sort of the, the use case that sparked it, but it's it's a really good one and I can show you that. There are some scripting enhancements. I'm not really prepared to go through scripting enhancements with you, but what I did wanna do for those of you on the call, I'll pull up a slide that has the script enhancements in it. I'll show you that section in the DP2 help file. If you are working with KPL and DP2 scripts, uh, you know that really you just need a point in the right direction. Many of you just need a point in the right direction, even if it's not scripting, just some of these functions, you just need to be pointed in the right direction. But I'll at least you know, pull up the list. You guys can screen grab it if you want. You can review this video, or you can just be confident that when you upgrade to version 23, you'll have that in your what's new document. And then finally, um, we're introducing our KPro Connect software in version 23, but we are in beta in February. So we're gonna go through our validation testing with a couple of labs and a couple of online galleries. I'll explain what it's all about here. And then we will certainly keep you posted as to general availability and when you guys could get started. On my next slide, I have a little bit more information just to visually illustrate the KPro Connect concept with you guys. So KPro Connect, our tagline, which is down in the bottom left here, is one connection, endless opportunities. We really are emphasizing the one connection concept for you guys. It's all about connecting basically more consumers with more professional output through you, through your lab fulfillment. We did lots of research, um, and now that we are in beta, you know, with this with this project. Our research certainly proved time and time again what the pain point is for making more connections, both for the online gallery solutions um, and you guys. And, and that was these one-to-one -one integrations that had to take place in order for this online gallery to list you as a lab fulfillment partner so that your photographers could pick you, their favorite pro lab, for their customers to fulfill through. And time and time again, photographers would ask the online gallery, whether it be Simple Photo or Photo Day or uh, Got Photo or any any one of them, they'd say, "Hey, do you do you partner with my my lab?" And commonly, their answer had to be no because they just didn't have the chance to integrate with that lab with you yet. So we wanted to remove that pain point by giving you the lab the ability to connect to the KPro Connect Cloud Catalog one time, I'll give you a visual of that towards the end of this presentation. It's real simple in the cloud. You just pick and choose the products that you want to fulfill in the lab with the options that you want to offer. Um, and then the, the online gallery, they integrate with KPro Connect's API one time. And I can't, connect, I can't really convey this one time effort enough because that's what the solution is centered around. Each party, both you and the online gallery connect one time to KPro Connect, and then you have the ability to request partnerships. You know, the online gallery says, oh, 
well, I see lab one, two, three, four. I'd like to have all of them be my partner. Or you guys as a lab, you see all these online galleries that are part of KPro Connect and you say, oh, well, I want my photographers to be able to use this solution or that solution. So it's all about this central catalog, guys, that gives you an easy way to connect. Again, ultimately, the whole goal here is giving consumers more access to professional output. You guys get to benefit from that by being a professional output partner with these um, online galleries. So I'll give you a visual of that. I'll wrap up the presentation with that. Uh, this is just a snapshot of those scripting enhancements that I told you guys I had in this PowerPoint deck. If anybody wants to screen grab it or something, um, this will be your sort of reminder of the stuff that Tom and the other developers put in DP2. I'm sure some of you are responsible for some of these scripting enhancements, so nice going there. So as I transition over to DP2, I would like to give you guys a chance to ask um, any questions so that I can be, you know, better prepared to show something specifically. Any questions now based on that short list of version 23? Anyone want to give me a chance to just take a couple breaths? I'm looking for a hand raise here. If anyone wanted to put one up, sorry, it takes me a second to scroll through the list. I don't see one, so I'll ask that again after I go through the DP2 demonstration side of the house for uh, several of these features, everyone. So let me first of all go to help contents and what's new, our what's new document, what's new in version 23. This is where I'd like to give kudos again to Pete, Peter V, because not only does he do, I feel like for years now, thanks to Peter V, our help has been much, much better and much more robust in DP2. Because not only do you get some really helpful information about what's new and what it is, you'll see where it is, you'll have a link to sort of the complete and, and full help file. For example, here's the one um, that I was explaining to you guys where you can submit to DP2 from your order feeder, a single order item with a whole bunch of images in it. And then DP2 has a way of creating like individual eight by tens out of that one order item, but it won't even create the order items in your order items table. It'll just stuff those into a job queue. It's really cool. But I forgot how to do it because I just learned how to do it myself, you know, because it's a new feature. So uh, yeah, I was getting ready for this session and thanks to Peter V, I clicked on the link and the help file and it brought me right to the uh, service desk uh, document, the help file, and I was very grateful. So, um, so it's good. I feel like we've done so much better recently. Again, thanks to Peter V. So obviously guys, there's some really good, there's some awesome stuff in here. I mean, look how long the list is for goodness sake. That speaks volumes to how busy We've been back here. It speaks volumes to how busy you've <laughs> been keeping us back here with your awesome feature requests and enhancements. So we can never thank you enough. You know we can't do it alone. So so keep it coming. I'm not going to go through this full list. I am going to highlight the few that were in my PowerPoint just so that we can illustrate a few of these with some visuals. It doesn't mean that they're the most important ones to you. It doesn't mean that they're of higher priority to us. It just means that they're sort of the cool ones that have a good way to visually demonstrate where some of them, it just takes the sentence, you know, to tell you that, oh, well, you can take advantage of your computer's address space in the last screen of the installation script now. Um, and we've uploaded to a new version of install shield. So some don't demonstrate well, but certainly good to know. So as soon as you guys upgrade, please go to your what's new document and check it out. So the first one I'm going to start with, I'm going to sort of go through these fast and furiously at this point because they demo quickly and easily. These are the crop guides that I was telling you about. I have two that are the same aspect ratio as I hold my mouse over the 8x10 and the 4x5. 
um, seeing basically what line it is. I'm gonna go here to the edit menu and this crop slash head alignment settings. We gave you these crop colors last version. We now have this guides tab. I'm just gonna put in a different aspect ratio here so that you can see how that plays out. Now I have my eight by 10, my five by seven, my four by six. I didn't change the default color red. I certainly could do that. But if you turn that on once, then you'll obviously see how that plays out on other images. Um, and it's relative to the crop that's in the image. I don't think this image has a default crop in the database, but it looks like this one does. So check that out, guys. Uh, we ran that by a couple of you and got the thumbs up on that, but that doesn't mean that there's not uh, potentially other use cases for that. So moving right along, guys, I'm going to go to the next one that I highlighted in my PowerPoint presentation, and that's organizing your crops. Remember I said that a couple of you um, asked about, um, you know, you had these long list of crops, so I'm going to go to my crop tab on manage images. Now, I already put all my crops in these nice, neat categories. So I have a school crop. I think I have a couple of yearbook crops. Um, I have some sports crops. So before version 23, you guys are gonna have your long list. Some of you told us that you strategically name your crops with I don't know, spaces in the front, zeros in the front, numeric numbers in the front, just so that you sort of create, some of you strategically, which was very cool, created some like separators in your list with like dashes and asterisks and stuff. So you got really creative. So we certainly hope that this is helpful for you guys. Your crop data table now has this category field. So, um, it's not very difficult for you guys to interact with this and add your categories. When you do, go ahead and refresh this list and you could, um, you know, you'll see those categories. Another part of this, I'm gonna go to the Align Group Balance, Head Alignment and Group Balance tab and go to um, the setup here. If this is where you create new crops in your system, you would be able to add a new crop here based on you know what you have going on over here, your X and Y and width and height stuff. And then you'd be able to save that within one of your categories so that as you're creating more crops, you can, um, thank you, yes, you can, um, I'm multitasking, you guys, I get very easily <laughs> distracted. I was reading a question, but anyway, um, you can organize your crops as you create them and then they'll play outside of that category. Uh, Bill, thanks so much for asking the question. Very appropriate, slow, appropriately so. When will version 23 be available? You guys will be hearing from us probably either tomorrow or Wednesday, definitely early in this week as to version 23's availability. So uh, an incredibly um, appropriate question, one that I probably just would have forgotten to address and it's very important. So thanks very much for that, Bill. You will be hearing very soon. Um, next one is move or copy an image. I'm right clicking and it's respective subject information record. So we have this new right click menu here, copy or move. Let's say I wanna move this to a different order. Now this guys, this would be a different order, you know, that's outside of the shoot. Obviously many of you use a shoot ID, you tie multiple orders together. And as you know, you can get to all of the images and data within that, you know, order because they're all tied together. So this is really outside, you know, different shoot so you really just need to identify it um by i can't talk and type very well that's why i'm slowing down here um so you really only need to identify it by um, order id and then i'm going to delete this is, this is a, a partial path if you guys you know you'll always keep your images housed inside of this you know initial base path 
And then from there, I want this to go into my sample order 001 directory. I want to give this a name of some value. I think it'll so probably. So I've just, instead of moving it, I've copied it. Here's a copy or move. Um, I could overwrite. I, I have those purposefully deselected, you guys. I wouldn't want to accidentally overwrite any images within my sample order that I'm copying this image into. And you can also indicate, you know, if you want the image file only, um, uh, the image record, and also the subject information record. So for those of you that need to carry over images from one school year to the next, whether it be staff or those staff images that you, you know, couldn't capture uh, in a, any subsequent year, you've given us a few different use cases of you know, whether it be copying, I think primarily staff, but you guys will know best um, what your potential use cases are. We'd love you to share them with us. And we'd also, of course, love you to check this out and um, just make sure that it's, you know, performing the way you would want to. And I bet you'll come up with some other really sort of good ideas as well. So please, when you get a chance, um, check that out and these other options as well. Uh, let's see, let me get to another one, guys. I want to open up the macros. I told you there's a couple of new macros in the system. You know, that lookup category is really the category that falls outside of a lot of the tables, right? You have your subject table, you have your images, order items, orders, those contain the fields respectively that are stored within those tables. The lookup contains a lot of good other uh, other stuff, you know, that's outside of the uh, table field scenario. So this was the one that entered the scene, I think the last version of DP2. This one said, um, you know, populate the contents of field one for this image. If it's not, if it's not null, or if it is null, give me the contents of field two. That one was there. It might be might be new to you. I mean, I know not all of you guys get around to installing every version of DP two, so you might be a couple behind, and maybe a lot of these features are new to you. I've been saying this for years. If it's new, tell everybody in the lab it's it's new. It might maybe it's been there two, three years, whatever. If it's new to you. Start promoting it. Tell everybody in the lab it's this brand new feature. Um, so this is the sister one I was telling you about for this variable image that goes into node 10,000. If the field one contents are null, then um, one of you requested it. Can't remember who, but thank you for that. Then we would then supply both field two and field three with a separator. So check those out give them a go. Um, I know many of you just need a kind of this direction and pointer in the right direction with this stuff. I know your wheels are spinning. I know you're thinking of the ways that you might use it or try it or implement it. We need you to do that. We need you to exercise these functions and then we need you to tell us please how it's shaking out for you. Let us know if it's good, if it's all you need. Let us know if you need um, something more. I'm jumping down to the products table, guys, for the aging hidden product scenario. Um, this is the little green arrow that you know about under more is aging. You've probably played with this from the pre previous release. Go back 10 years, go back how many ever years you need to uh, choose a date and see what's never been printed. See which products have no order items. Now, mine are hefty numbers because I'm in a training database and I never actually print <laughs> my my products. So I have a lot that seem to be not used. Um, so you can, of course, you can delete those. That's one option that you have. The other option that you have, new in version 23, is to right click. And we've given you this manage hidden products right click menu you could hide those products 
So now those are hidden from view. You can right click again. You can go and show all of the products that are hidden in table format. You can see that we've given you a hidden column that you can deselect and save to unhide them basically. Um, or, you know, eventually you could delete the products from here as well. So I just wanted to combine that hidden products with our aging product scenario that became available last version. Um, okay, guys, one other one I want to show you was this uh, couple. Sorry, I have a couple more things to show you yet before I switch over to KPro Connect in the cloud. Let me go to my order here and show you that order summary report. I think I put it in here. Maybe I didn't. I think I have the product right here, though. Is my order summary product? I don't see it there. Maybe it's here. Here's order summary. I think I have a macro in here already. Um, the macro, I'll show you where it is inside of the help file. Peter put it in the call to it. We don't have the call in the macro assistant. I don't know. We just maybe didn't have the right place to put it. And we also know that the script that goes along with returning this order summary, the order summary contents, it's probably not finessed the way that you want it. So... I don't know if we wanted to really expose the macro without you sort of understanding the script behind the scenes and finessing it the way you would want that order summary to spell out. But basically, it looks at your entire order, all of the products, all of the contents, and returns right now anyway, this quantity, product, description, information. But if you need it to be anything more robust than that or formatted differently or some additional information, you'll find that order summary script inside of your macros folder, inside of your, your scripts folder. So just a little teaser there, guys, on that one. Which one am I going to switch to now? Oh, this one's cool. Uh, this is the one where your order feeder has submitted a job like this with multiple images on one page where in VP2, when I run this, look, look what happens. I think I have stuff in the job queue. I have all of these individual jobs based off of that one up product with a whole bunch of images in it. I mean, it saves you time. It saves the, the saves your customers potentially time of, of building um, jobs individually. Um, so it's basically a one to many without even creating those order items here in the order items table. And the ticket is this. You need a text node, and it's really spelled out beautifully, like I said in the beginning in your help file. I wouldn't have known how to do it unless I went to Peter's help file and said, how do I set this up? Because I saw a demo like one time and I totally forgot. So there's a text node here. You put in there, this is my 8 by 10 product. So that's why all of these jobs are sitting in my job queue, you know, waiting to be ultimately rendered out as 8 by 10 because I identified the product that I want for these to expand to individually. And then if you pop open your text node and right click, um, many of you working with Capture Life know that that's how you get to all your Capture Life set of instructions. That's also how you get to this target product instruction that DP2 looks for and reads. And when it sees it in here, if I go to the, um, the properties of the node, when DP2 basically sees this target product underscore product ID text node name, it knows what to do, thanks to Dave Tillman and the team who put some code in there that says, okay, this is a scenario where this expands out to jobs in the job queue. So pretty cool there. I hope you guys are, you know, conceptually and, and visually getting some of these cool features. Um, I have one more topic to cover, but how you guys doing? You doing okay? Can you give me a high five or a, ha a hand raise if you're 
if you're getting this guys and it's making sense thank you thank you at least conceptually here i will say it again this is not your be all end all i'm moving at a very fast pace we have so many great things in version 23 to cover it all in 45 minutes does not do it justice but for a teaser we hope that it can can be just that for you guys so in these last few minutes I am going to bounce out to, um, I sh you should be looking at a new screen now. I'll go to the dashboard of KPRO uh, Connect. Can you guys give me a hands up again if you can see my KPRO Connect dashboard okay? Perfect. Thank you for that, you guys. Even though we're not chatting with, with each other, it, it gives me comfort to be able to communicate with you guys and get a confirmation that you see um, what I'm seeing. So again, uh, KPRO Connect, we are in beta for the month of February, so we will be keeping you posted as to general availability, but I did want to leave you with a visual of KPRO Connect. I'm logged in as a test lab. This dashboard, you can see the panel over here of functions. This dashboard will show you order activity. So once you're set up and once you're partnered with an online gallery or two or three or four or five, you know, how many ever you want to partner with that are a part of the system. I mean, you all guys, you all, each of you have to integrate one time with KPRO Connect then you can request these relationships and partnerships with each other. But this dashboard will very, very visually show you order activity for the month, month over month. Um, it'll show you the orders that are coming in from what online gallery. It'll also show you what types of orders. Are they photo print orders? Are they inkjet orders? Are they metals? Are they gallery wraps? Are they some of your specialty product items? Very, very cool stuff. But the first thing you have to do is create your catalog. And I can only give you guys just a little bit of a taste of this here. Um, you'll be able to choose from uh, the categories that we have in the system. You will be able to upload your own products as well. Some of that is a, a work in progress as we continue through the month of February for beta, your one single image and single text node products, soon to be your multiple image node, multiple text node products. I'll just give you a quick taste of this. I've selected just a couple of categories, um, photo prints and metals. We organized these images or these prints by sizes because when this plays out into DP2, you do have to ingest this catalog into DP2 and go through your mapping process, just one. We think having um, products organized by category will help with the setup. But again, I can't stress enough that it's a one-time setup anyway. So we think, you know, the pain point will be completely eliminated, obviously, after you go through your one-time setup for KPRO Connect and then form multiple relationships. So I'll just go through here. I'll just accept all print sizes. This is just going to advance me through the rest of the setup. Perhaps I don't offer silk paper, so I won't include that as a paper type option. Um, if you include finishing, UV spray, you can choose to include any of this stuff, guys, for all sizes or just some selected sizes, in which case you'd have to go through some additional configuration to say, well, which sizes do you offer it for? Which ones do you not? Which mounting options do you or don't you offer? And then I'm pretty much done setting up the photo prints indicated over here. Now I could go through the metal setup. It, this, is, this is really, it's just a pretty interface. It's really streamlined. It's easy to use. It's very intuitive. And then when you're done here, guys, the last thing that you would do is you would publish this um, to the server. You know, I'm on our, this is our staging server, soon to be our live server. But the catalog is now published. Um, online galleries can see how many catalogs you have in your, in, you know, products rather you have in your catalog. And then over in DP2, guys, 
I would just go through um, an ingestion process. We, and I can't really, don't have the time to show you this, but we have the ability here to, you know, go ahead and ingest the catalog, bring it into DP2. And our goal is to help you with some of the mapping process. So it's not such a heavy lifting task for you. Um, but you guys, you know, we would, we're dedicated to helping you guys out with that making sure you understand how to bring in your KPRO Connect catalog and all of your options that are associated with it in any mapping process that you have to go through that, that one time. So I won't take you through the screens, the KPX screens that are in DP2, um, but I just wanted to sort of leave you guys with a little bit of taste in your mouth as to, um, as to it, KPRO Connect's availability and an overview of, of the functionality. Um, I do have a couple of questions that came in and we, you guys, we are at 145. So I, I sort of committed to being done with the content at 145. So I've covered everything at this point that I wanted to cover. I'm not going anywhere. I wanna open it up for questions. I did show I do have a question. Would you show an example of the, that last macro? I, I think it was this order summary, or perhaps it was that lookup macro. I don't really have that as an example, sorry, set up that I could show. Um, Leon, you might have been asking about this one, this subject info macro. I'm sorry that I don't have it set up, and it would probably... Yeah, the field one and two macro. Um, for this field one and two macro, again, I don't have it quickly set up to show you, but the way it works is, you know, obviously if this macro were in a text node relative to this image 10,000, if field number one, say the sports team was empty for the image that you're inserting into field 10,000, then DP2 would look into the contents of field two, maybe supply the league value or some secondary position. Maybe the player has a primary position. And if that's empty, then DP2 will look into your other field of choice. So you would actually change these, you know, to maybe player position one, and this one could be player position two. And if the first one is empty, then DP2 would look into um, the second one. I hope that's helpful. Leon, if that doesn't address that question, then you know certainly um, let us know. I just want to say thanks so much for carving out the time in your busy day to hear this live. We will be communicating version 23's availability to you very soon. The whole team encourages you to find the time for your upgrades so that you guys can be aligned in your production systems with our support and service team and everything that's new and the latest and greatest feature set in DP2. It's always very helpful if, if we can be aligned and not potentially chasing um, older issues or fixed problems or things like that. So thank you everyone. I really appreciate you being here and I look forward to connecting with you all again in a micro learning session. Take care everyone. Have a great day.